Hi friends, in this video of ECG basics, today I will talk about left bundle branch block. First is the disclaimer. Caring Talks YouTube channel does not provide medical advice. Information available on this channel does not offer diagnosis or advice regarding the treatment. Information provided by this channel is for educational purpose only and it should not be used as an alternative to healthcare professionals diagnosis or treatment of any person or animal. Please seek the help of medical expert for diagnosis, prevention and treatment of medical illnesses. There is no endorsement for any brand or a company. The diagnostic criteria for left bundle branch block is when we find QRS duration more than equal to 120 milliseconds, dominant S wave in V1, broad monophasic R wave in later leads that is lead 1, AVL, V5, V6, absence of Q waves in later leads, prolonged R wave peak time that is more than 60 milliseconds in lead V5 and V6. That is in V1 we will get dominant S wave, in V6 we will get, will get broad M shaped R wave. The other associated feature may include left axis deviation, poor R wave progression in the precordial leads and appropriate discordance. Coming to the electrophysiology, in normal cardiac conduction, we know that impulses they travel equally down the left and right bundles with the septum activated from the left to the right and formation of small Q waves in later leads. In left bundle branch block, the conduction delays means that impulses travel first by the right bundle branch to the right ventricle and then to the left ventricular by the septum. Septal activation is thus reverse eliminating the little Q waves. The overall depolarization vector from the right to left ventricle produces tall R wave in the later leads that is lead 1, V5 and V6 and deep S wave in the right precordial leads that is V1 and V3. The delay between the activation of the right ventricle and the left ventricle produces a characteristic M shaped R wave seen in the later leads. Delayed overall conduction time to the left ventricle extends the QRS duration to more than equal to 120 milliseconds. Mm. The sequence of conduction in left bundle branch block is conduction delay means impulses travel first by the right bundle branch block as shown with the black arrow. Then septum is activated from the right to the left shown as yellow arrows and overall depolarization vector is directed towards later leads that is red arrow. So in the ECG uh, QRS morphology we get in the later leads as notched M shaped R waves in the later leads that is lead 1, AVL, V5, V6 mostly V5 and V6 and monophasic or RS complexes M shaped notched R wave or we can say monophasic RS complexes. The QRS morphology in V1 will be either we get RS complexes that is small R wave and deep S wave or QS complexes that is Q and S wave with no preceding R wave. This will this we get in V1 uh, recorded lead. So we get RS complex in V1, tiny R wave, deep S error and characteristics later lead morphology in V5, V6 will be notched M shaped R wave or we can say monophasic R wave in V5, V6 and also we get appropriate discontents in V1 with ST elevation and upright T waves. So what about the ST elevation? As we know that appropriate discordance refers to the fact that abnormal depolarization should be followed by the abnormal repolarization which means discordant to the preceding QRS complexes. The later leads with tall R wave will often have associated ST segment depression and T wave inversion and those with deep S wave can have an allowable amount of ST elevation that does not indicate ischemia. It is generally viewed as less than 25% of the size of the preceding S wave. Any concordance that, that should worry us. Any concordant ST segment change is concerning and it may suggest ischemia. So in this ECG we can see that there is appropriate discordant as ST depression in lead V5 and V6 as well as 
mild ST elevation in B2 and B3. The causes of the left bundle branch block are usually when we get left bundle branch block we should think that patient may have some cardiac abnormality. It is very uncommon that left bundle branch block exists without any organic disease. The causes are varied and they include lotic stenosis, ischemic heart disease, hypertension, dilated cardiomyopathy, anterior MI, Lennigrip leaves in disease that is primary degenerative disease of the conductive system, hyperkalemia and digoxin toxicity. In left bundle branch block in the context of chest pain, it was initially considered as STME equivalent and a part of criteria for thrombolysis. However, more up-to-date data suggests that the chest pain patient with new LBB have very little increased risk of acute myocardial infarction at the time of presentation and practice has now evolved to examine for excessive discordance or concordant ST segment changes indicative of infarction. In this ECG we can see broad notched R wave in the lead AVL and lead 1 and there is absence of Q waves in lead B5 and B6. At times we see LBB with AF, we can see deep S wave in lead 1, lead B1 and B3 and tall R waves laterally that is in lead B5 and B6. This is the appropriate discordance. Incomplete RBB or sorry, incomplete LBB is when the duration of the QRS duration is uh, QRS complexes is less than 120 milliseconds. The differential diagnosis of left ventral branch block is right ventricular pace rhythm that will produce a similar morphology as impulse conduction originate from the right ventricle and travel across the septum to the left ventricle as the case in the left ventral branch block. Pacing spikes will be present and the same concept regarding the appropriate discordance also applies. Left ventricular hypertrophy may produce a similar appearance to left ventral branch block with QRS widening and ST depression or T wave innovation in the later leads. Dr. Jonas Sykes has said, hope lies in dreams, in imagination and in the courage of those who dare to make dreams into reality. This was all about the left bundle branch block in ECG basic. Thank you. Keep learning.